Não, 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 não. É. Has returned. He's back. <laughs> He's back, guys. And we're back. And welcome to episode number 25 of On the Back Hash, where we talk all things about the arts. <laughs> uh, my name is Cedric. Here with me today, Zach and Chris. Will is under the weather this time. I hope this doesn't yeah. like pass around. I ain't trying to get my <laughs> Like, I sent mine from Kentucky to Washington. Like, that's that's insane. I, I did all that. Yeah. I'm around snotty kids all day. Yeah. Anyway. I don't. That's, He's the only one that day. hasn't had it yet. Said. So I teach all day, and I come home, and I I get it all day with the kids, like our kids too. Yeah, so you got so. kids, and then you deal with kids, and then you're, you got family that works in the medical field. So that's right. You know, that's right. Now the last episode I missed <laughs> once because because I was sick. It was uh, it was sleep. I fell asleep, <laughs> and I didn't get the <laughs> alert. And I was out, and I woke up at like five the next morning. And I was like, "Oh my god!" Didn't get any of it. I was just, I was asleep like eight o'clock, man. It yeah. was it was worried about you because yeah, you didn't do the same. You it, to, was, it was crazy. You have to dock your pay for that one. I know, right? All that all that money I get from this, you know. I will. The kids ask me all the time, like, "You never get sick." I was like, "I get sick. I just." I always get to a point where I can handle it, though. So if I can function enough to get out of bed, I'm just going to come on in. And I'll just be sure to stay away from the kids. But I do. I, I'm assuming it helps. I'm telling myself it helps. So maybe a placebo effect. But I do take an airborne every morning. Hey, that vitamin C would do, man. That, that Every morning. And get you through the day. I, uh, my thing is, like, I just, <clears throat> like, the amount of teaching I have, I have to do throughout the day. Like, I'm like, if I have to like talk for 30, like 30, 40 minutes, like every class period, I'm not going to make it <laughs> like it's going to, I'm like, I, I got to take the day cause I'm not going to, not going to have him. So, I mean, I need to start just like taking two oranges like, <laughs> like that every day before I come into school. <laughs> I don't get sick. <laughs> Uh, it's it's inevitable. It's going to happen. So mm-hmm. I, just to, I just try to Especially make it. Especially like with me being around elementary kids, like random kindergartners and first graders that I don't know, but they want to hug me. There's no such with, thing as personal space. In elementary snotty school. nose or whatever. <laughs> it's like, oh, thank you. <clears throat> and then I go and I don't get and hand sanitizer. I teach, I teach eighth grade. So we're like teenagers and like, the last thing mm-hmm. they want to have is physical contact at all. <laughs> so I'm like, yep, let's go for it. I'm, I'm down. You you stay in there. You might get a fist bump out of mm-hmm. me. You might not. I don't know. They're all like, oh, my God, who's this fist bumps anymore? You know, that kind of that kind of feeling. But, you know, it's one good thing about middle school is that they think they're too cool for, you know, all that stuff. So Everything. Everything. Yes. <laughs> Everything. I mean, I, I was giving sorry. I, I don't mean a tangent on this. But I was giving notes the other day, and I, I am one of the teachers that I try to give notes few and far between because one, it's boring to them, and two, you know, the only person that's learning at that point is me because I'm the only one talking. Anyway, last time we had notes was like before Thanksgiving break, and we had to take some notes and like. There was maybe the max on each slide was like two sentences. And you would have thought you'd ask like them that. to solve world hunger, right? And they're like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh. I'm like, when's the last time I gave you all the notes? I'm just sitting there. I was like, huh? What? Crickets. I'm waiting. Where, where is it? Where is it? Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Or like we'll do like a cool activity. And they're just like, oh, my God. I'm like, I'm more than happy to get out a textbook. I mean, I'll. I mean, we'll bust them out. We'll do, we'll do some reading out of the textbook. I was like, we'll do it like how I did when I was in school. I'm at that point in my career now. I'm like, back when I was in school, we used to do this. I'm like, I'm not even that old. I'm, I'm already <laughs> doing this crap. So, that's how toughen be. up. That's how be. I know. But, they'll, we'll, we'll learn them at some point. They'll, they'll figure it yeah, out. Yeah, you hope. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, today we're going to, our focus is going to be just talking about things that we like to see in shows where there's, 
um, indoor shows or DCI shows or just marching band shows in general. Um, things we kind of look forward to or like to see in shows, what we think is kind of good show design and things like that. And we we haven't talked about this beforehand, so like it could be three completely different answers, which is cool because I think that's the way it should Wait, be. We did we don't plan our podcast episodes. Um, I mean, Shh. I don't. Mm-hmm. Y'all may have done. <laughs> <laughs> no, we do I'm sure you can tell our episodes now. We don't play. No. We don't it's edit like, either. We just do it. We just, just go for it. You're getting it wrong. Get what you get. Get what you get. Um, but um, we do want to kind of mention a few other things before we kind of get into that topic. Uh, one of which was if you are on Instagram and you happen to follow the Troopers, mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. they. they uh, released a small clip from their January camp and I don't get excited about stuff like that too early but that was some stuff dude <laughs> listen I'm telling you that I think you can find it on any of their social medias now but yeah yeah I think we, we said we, it we, what we two it. two three years in a row now uh, what aggressive troopers are good troopers and you getting that? Do you know from what they, we got so far? At least they like we were, we were talking about. They they've been playing that as soon as like they were done at finals. Like they were ready to go. Like they announced in like December or something like that. <laughs> Before like, you get on the bus back home, here's your sheet music. Yeah, yeah we've already arranged camp. it. Here you go. Yes, but, well, I think like, I'm going I'm to. Go. Don't matter. <laughs> don't matter. Um, <laughs> I think I'm going to because I don't think I have anything. I don't know, we might be going. I don't know. I have anything going on. I might uh, splurge a little bit and watch that little fun the webinar. Can't, yeah. Yeah, because I wanted to see what they got cooking up there, man. Because, like, if they say what they're going to do in the description of that webinar, like, one, educational, first off, just, like, how they design stuff would just, just be cool as just – an educator in the marching arts just to listen to, but like sneak peek of stuff and kind of what they're working on and stuff like that. Like it might be worth your while if, if uh, you got some time, you've got the money to spare and it goes to a good cause, you know, $10 it goes to, you know, help them out. Mm-hmm. So, um, which is interesting. I think that'd be kind of cool. I don't know if you guys, I can't remember if you guys saw about this last episode, but like, I think it'd be kind of cool if, Groups start. We start seeing groups do this more. Of the, uh, we did say if if it just kind of went off well and people took to it well, you could possibly see other people doing it. Right now, troopers are ahead of my, on the hype train right now. Yeah, um, I think they knew they had something last year and they built. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm trying to build off of it, so I think they're getting ahead of the hype train a little bit early. Um, I mean, really, really, uh, really, really early prediction, but like. They might, they come out hot. They might be a lock, like in finals. You know, with the Vanguard being out now, <clears throat> man, it's gonna be interesting. Yeah, with Vanguard not coming out, that does open a spot. Yeah, which it does. Hmm. Yeah, if you haven't watched that clip yet, it's on Twitter. It's on Instagram. It's I'm sure it's on Facebook too. And I mean, it's TikTok probably. I mean, it's it's who, buddy. Already Very like nice. That in January. <laughs> yeah. Here. I, I saw that and was like, instantly share. Okay. <laughs> I was like, this is, I'm, I'm here for it, Troopers. Mm-hmm. So, um, and then from the percussion world, uh, mm-hmm. we're getting more, there were a couple of uh, show announcements that we also caught on Instagram. So a lot of shows that we see, um, you know, show announcements and stuff like that, we're catching them on Instagram. Um, and, or maybe Twitter. So that's a good place to kind of follow your groups and keep track with them. Uh, one was uh, Broken City. I believe their 2023 program is entitled Self. So sticking with the one word titles again. Um, <laughs> I have not seen a description yet uh, about what it's about, but as I alluded to in a previous episode, it doesn't matter because 
you're gonna watch it anyway, and mm-hmm. you know, it's gonna be it's gonna be good. It's, it's gonna be good. So, uh, I could, like I said, no, they are like the kings of kings and queens of just using space, both musically and visually, and making it make it's sense. a hard thing to do too, man. It is. You know, it is people, you know, people will always think, oh, you got to cram a bunch of notes and, um, you got to cram a bunch of notes all the time and, you know, play a bunch of bad stuff. And that's not always the case. They show that you can do it with some touch and some, and some finesse. So, trying to see if I can find any info about their show. But I don't see any on their website. I mean, prelude to what we're going to talk about later on, but stuff like that gets me excited about shows. That right there. Like, all it says out- for all it says for them is it's the definition of self, a person's essential being that distinguishes them from others. So, I mean, you can take that. Does it do anything but ways. add to the mystery? Yeah. Yep. Yep. You can take that a lot of different ways. And then um, we also got a show title from um, Pulse Percussion called Where the Streets Have No Names. Um, YouTube. Oh, that mm-hmm. what that is? That's yeah, a YouTube, YouTube song. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so. Um, Flow Marching has a running document of show announcements. Okay. And they also have. Um, Atlanta Quest, their show's called Bring Me a Dream. Says, we don't always dream that which we imagine. Come with us as we leave the waking world and experience another. One occupied by perpetual dreamers that have already succumbed to the malediction of the Sandman. So, there's that for you. Have y'all watched that, the Sandman on Netflix? Mm Mm-mm. Woo! Mm-mm. Good show. Sorry, you just said same man. I just, <laughs> just thought of that. It is good. Sorry. Um, Atlanta Quest has been a group that's been on the come up to consistent perennial finalists over the past several years. Um, so they did a uh, a show up. Was it them? They did a uh, a show about villains. Was that them? Yes. Like, uh, yeah, yes. I like that. Was a good show. That was that was back when I was still helping out in the indoor world. So it's been a few years since that's happened, but that was a that was a really good show. I like. I believe that was kind of. A, I could be mistaken, but I believe that was part of the come up. The beginning of that uh, was that year, uh, but starting um, 2012, 2013, <clears throat> something like that. Yeah. And then there's one more on this list. It's Pow Percussion. Their show is titled Asylum, and it says their repertoire includes Crazy by Gnarls Barkley. So that'll be cool. Very California of them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we got that. Um, I know Infinity has announced their third. Infinity three or thing. Infinity two have announced their shows. Uh, I believe Infinity three is uh, the family piano. Um, the really cool, um, really cool trailer teaser video for that. Um, hmm. on Instagram. So, so yeah, groups are start to slowly starting to to reveal what they're going to do. Lots of people doing their preview shows coming up. Um, so you got preview, people got preview shows coming up this week or mm-hmm. either like going into full shows. I know uh, this weekend's our percussion premieres for our circuit. Um, we will not be there because the contest was full when I signed up. But that's okay. That gives us two more weeks. That gives us two more <laughs> weeks to prepare. Because um, I'm being... Dumb. <laughs> That's nothing, too. By the way, if you're out somewhere and you see a a preview show or something, go to it, please. Support mm-hmm. support the group or support the circuit because that's a fundraiser. If you like, I think it was like was it RCC that's got one coming up, and then someone else that we I saw RCC, has one think- coming up. Broken City, I think, has one. Um, yeah. Yeah, Broken City is the fifth, so Sunday. Yeah. Um, or that's the premiere. 
So that, look, that looks like an actual show. Oh. Yeah. I think RCC is just doing like, I think it's RCC is just doing a, uh, they're doing like a, like a fan performance or, you know, something like that, I think. Okay. Which are always cool. If you've ever, if you've ever been to, you know, there's someone close to you that does something like that. You, once again, you get a lot of like things you don't normally see. If you just go to a normal show, you just get, you know, the product and, you know, kind of explain a little bit more stuff to you if you go to those, which I think is really cool if you have the opportunity to. Yeah, they often do, like, their warm-up package and uh, front ensemble player lot teams. So it's, like you said, get some behind-the-scenes type of looks in the thing. So, so yeah, definitely check out a preview show if you can, if uh, or just a show in general. I think you'll enjoy it, especially these world-class groups that are giving you a sneak peek into what's going on. And the cool thing about indoor, one thing I love about it is the show won't be the same twice. Like you, will, you may see it now in the premiere, or whatever, and then it'll be completely different a month from now. So, mm-hmm. dude, that's one thing I love about indoor is the the ability to change so quickly and adapt quickly because you're getting like, you know. You know, DCI, and you, you see it, you know, change. I mean, but, like, DCI. Well, it's a lot me, of DCI to is in a different, it's a different realm than indoor. Because I feel like indoor, you know, especially your work life, you got to find the time to practice, you know. And, you know, with DCI, like, you're, you're practicing nonstop. You know what I mean? Like, together, so it makes it a little bit easier to change, which I think. I think it's cool, you know, indoor, just how quick feedback comes through and how mm-hmm. much it changes. Cause like, you know, in our marching circuit, you get to the second week of the season. They're like, I think you need to change this. Like, man, I don't know if we can even go back yeah. and change it. Let's but indoor is like, no, we're going to change that right now. You know, yeah. it's um, also a lot easier to change for 16 people. Yes. than it is 160 yeah. or 150, you know? So, true. um, <clears throat> Yeah, and then, like, one thing that indoor shows have that you don't get from outdoor a lot of places is a critique with judges. You know, some some local shows around here are starting to offer that. But, you know, when you get that 15 minutes of time with the people who just saw your group, you know, you can have that open conversation with them and and ask them questions or listen to their feedback and not have to listen to it on a tape and then wonder what they meant by it when you can ask them, okay, so when you're saying this, what did you, what are you expecting from this or that? Yeah. I remember, um, distinctly the year we did five, it was our fifth year and we did five and we had one of the sections where we were going to demonstrate the five senses. So we did it and we went to critique and one of the judges like, you know, I really thought you would have did like Jackson five here. Or something like that. And I was like, he said, and say, I don't think the five senses is going to come across the way that you, you want it to. So that next week, you know, went back and was just like, all right, we're scrapping this whole thing. You know, we learned Jackson five, or, you know, I want you back in, in a rehearsal. And then, um, you know, we did uh, take five by Dave Brubeck. Like, so we <laughs> re revamped, like, 30 seconds a show in a week, but we could, like you said, we could do that because we're smaller and, mm-hmm. you know, you can get things across a lot quicker. I feel like yeah, that's what I love about indoor. Yeah. I feel like that's in so BCI, cool. you, they, those, the big changes are scheduled. Like, yes. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, all right. We're going to, this is going to be, we're going to put our real closure on here. Uh, or, you know, we're going to change this part here, you know, and there are some changes. We've heard something, we heard some last year that was just like, that was a smart change. Um, Blue Coats made some, I think, some really smart critical changes. Just a little bit of, just a little bit of holes action, and cleaned up a lot of uh, some tougher sections. And mm-hmm. so Dude, it happened in um, yeah, but I think it's playing a little bit. I never forget the nostalgia, and we can move on from here. But I never forget <clears throat> our last year working together before we all split off, and we had a concept for a show. We made the floor. We had the floor made, and then we sat down in Zach's basement, and we're like, "This ain't working. What do we need to do?" And we completely changed the concepts of <laughs> our show 
to something completely different, got new quotes and all that stuff. And like, it was like literally like before the season started. <laughs> like, we're just yeah. like, eh, we got to change. This is not working. It ain't happening. So that's always fun. So, yeah, those, that's why I think that's one reason why I like indoor so much is because. Because I have control over it, and if something ain't working, I can change it. Like I know I have the ability, and and the kids that I picked, I know. All right, if this needs to get done. Mm-hmm. Done. Um, yeah, it was on the people that actually do the activity, because you know, to be able to execute one concept, and they'd be like, yeah, you know what, that's not working. We're gonna try this, and and then buying into it, and yep, doing it, man, that takes. There ain't no, there ain't no better kid. That's a terrible grammar, but uh, <laughs> there's no better kid than um, uh, music kid. I mean, yep. like you can't tell me otherwise. You know, they go through a lot and they use the brain. So, yep. so, um, so to kind of get into our topic, what do we think makes a great show? Um, because in like I said, and as we talk about this, if you think about something, leave it in the comments below. Um, let us know what what you think makes a great show, what things you like to see in shows, and um, and things of that nature. Because what everybody thinks is great is different. Um, what they like is different, and it's a lot of it's based off of your surroundings and how how you grew up. You know, if you marched in a traditional style group as opposed to a core style group, like your thought process and and what's cool is going to be different than everybody else's, but um, that's okay. Um, it works like that. So, um, let's see. We want to go first. Can I talk about some stuff? Jeez, I don't... I'll go. All right, All right. Go ahead, Um <clears throat> Let yeah, me start minutes. off with something <laughs> that I that I don't like to see in shows. Is that okay? Megan and Nancy all the time. I'm not, jeez, man. (laughs) I'm not a big fan of gimmicks and stunts. Like, I, like I, I, I've referenced this a few times. I could care less about the upside down tenors from Cavaliers. Like, that does nothing for me, and it's partially because I'd seen it before, and. In indoor, but the outdoor crowd hadn't, so they flipped their lid about it. But it's like somebody did that like four <laughs> years ago. I'm gonna let you finish, but Beyonce <laughs> had the greatest album of all time. No, um, so yeah, just I'm running for Kim president. Key, 2020, Kim McKee, like look over here, kind of stuff. I don't know. It kind of takes away from me. What I do like to see, um, I'll give two examples. One of the types of shows that I really enjoy seeing, um, I think a good example of the storytelling element is SOS from Boston. It was straightforward enough, but it didn't didn't grab you by the hand and drag you through it either. You kind of had to find your way and and see it a few times before you caught everything. Okay. Um, it told a story, but it wasn't just point blank, beginning, middle, end, boom, boom, boom. Here's your yeah. story in front of your face. The second thing, I like shows that make me think. And so, like, when we talk about Blue Nights, um, oh. when they had their streak of four or five years in a row where it was just like, I don't know where I am right now, but I like it. <laughs> Can we um, pause for a and second? Then I, I, and, yeah. I gotta say, sorry, you brought up Blue Stars. I had to bring up this moment because I don't know if we've talked about this on the podcast. But back behind Cedric, if you're watching, is a couch. It's a different couch now. But we went over, uh, what year was the Because show for the Blue Knights? What year was oh, that? 14, I think. 14 so or 15. We, com- we went, uh, Cedric always uh, buys the the world championships or whatever. And then we all went over there to watch it. And I'll never forget. Was that yours? I think it was at Seth's house. I'll never forget. That was like one of Zach's favorite shows. And Oh, we it was, no, it was at my where, house. It was at your house. Okay. It was at your house. And we're, he's so excited. 
and <laughs> oh. and the because at the very end it was copyrighted, and it, and the quote and just cut out. There's no sound, and Zach's like, no, <laughs> like like stood up, like I mean, just we're all dying it was, laughing. It like, was the the moment, and it just <laughs> favorite moment and killed it. Just uh, gone. Uh, so good. Sorry, I just had to bring that up. I started laughing. 2015. <sighs> 2015. Okay, Anyways, right. but so I like I like a story that makes a uh, story a show that makes me think, and you know, like Blue Knights. But then, like I think back to Blue Stars this past season, where you find these moments in it where you're like, oh, I see what I see what this means. You know, they didn't have they didn't come out and tell you. They didn't say this means this, you know, this represents this. You had to figure that out for yourself. And, um, and it's some of those things that you're not going to catch if you just watch it one time. Like if you just go to finals, you're going to enjoy it, but you don't have that opportunity to see it more than once and analyze it. And that's one thing this year I'm really glad I got to do was with the fan network flow is, you know, I got to see these shows sometimes twice a week. And I got to see the development aspect of it and I got to see the changes. But then I, you know, one time I would watch just the, the wins, you know, I would just watch the brass and then the next run I'd watch the battery and then maybe watch the guard one time. And, you know, I had that opportunity to, you know, see the different aspects and the storytelling that goes on. So those are two big things, two kind of shows that I like. Chris? All right. Well, uh, <clears throat> so I guess a couple things that, you know, when I'm looking at a show that, you know, there for me, the enjoyment factor has to come in, in like different variations. So like, um, I like seeing a show that kind of like what Zach was saying, like the story is not it's enough to where like if you're if you don't know a lot about a a topic that's picked mm -hmm. even if you don't know anything about it you understand what's going on in the show but then if you have more of a background on it you still appreciate it because i think sometimes what happens if is like you know you might get a show that it, it tries to um, appeal to just the broader audience of stuff. And so like your people that are really in that background, it makes it feel gimmicky. Like, mm -hmm. Oh, well there's a gimmick there. There's a gimmick there. You know, that kind of stuff, which I think, uh, no, I'm not going to say that I'll, I'll stop there, but uh, <laughs> a certain core this year had that problem. And I think that really hurt them is that it was so broad that, um, the background people, it, it, what happens to kids gimmicky. And then, people want to insert what they think should happen in that show. And they take, and they, it hurts them overall because people are like, this is what should happen. And because you're not doing that, I don't like it. That happens a lot. So I like shows that like, that give you the, the broadness there. And, um, but then if you know more about it, it gives you, you know, you appreciate mm -hmm. a whole lot more. You see the subtleties that are in there. Mm -hmm. uh, Blue Stars this year is a perfect example of that. You know, you can understand War and Peace. You can see the, you know, what's going on. You kind of understand the, 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 you know, what's going on in the broad sense. But then if you understand the background of where they're coming from and looking at it, you have, you know, greater appreciation for it um, there. Um, a show that I really love that everyone, like, really does not, a lot of them don't like is... Uh, the Cabaret Voltaire from Blue Devils, um, whenever, I can't remember what year that is, but a lot of people don't like that show because they don't understand what that show was about. Mm -hmm. So like, like th it was about the Dada movement. If you don't know what the Dada movement is, just, I'm not going to get into all of it, but it's all about like breaking you out of comfort or, you know, like getting you comfortable and then like having a knee jerk reaction, which is why Cabaret Voltaire makes no sense at all. Like those two things don't go together. So that whole show, if you understand it, then like you understand why they're only playing like a certain thing for like a minute. And then they're, they're changing into a different genre, a different 
tempo, like all this kind of crazy stuff. Awesome show, but it did not appeal to the broad base. So I feel like shows mm-hmm. that are able to hit those two levels of you can get people at broad level, but yeah. still have people appreciate it at a higher level. That's why I like seeing mm-hmm. um, there. The other thing it, that I like in a show is when the entire group plays the majority of the time. That's always one of my big stickler. I'm sorry. I it, I know that sounds bad, but that's across every 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 circuit, every every activity is I understand that there needs to be moments of um uh, you know shining moments, you know, to show off some certain things that are going on. But if your group is not playing majority of the time, then you're really just eh, for me a lot of times. Um, with that. So, um, seeing the whole group participating in the activity and, and presenting their show, um, there, that's why I think I like, you know, like, I don't know, a core that does that really well. Um, maybe like Cavaliers here and there, like, uh, they're more recent ones. They, they kind of do that. Um, Blue stars, blue blue knights, kind of in in that realm. They all have shining moments, but then the majority of the group is 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 playing, um, you know that kind of stuff there. And then just one other thing, just visually, like I like visually aggressive looking shows. Like, and I, if you ever watched the the one video that I we did for the react for me was Spin Cycle by Cadets, and just like just telling a story through visual and having like aggressive. Uh, drill that you know mm-hmm. encapsulates all that, which I think Contrary we're trying to get a little bit away from. Yeah, we're getting a little bit away from that, which you know I'm okay with that because there's other stuff that's growing wise in other parts of <clears throat> of activity. But um, that's kind of what I look for um, as I go through stuff. So, there you go. Yeah, for me, it's a lot of along the same lines as as a show that kind of makes you think. Um, you know. Especially with concepts that are that are a little bit more tangible, you know, how do you get those those elements across, both musically and visually? You know, I love hearing a show that has a particular title, and then I hear the music, and I was like, ah, oh, I see why you did that. Like that's mm-hmm. smart. Or uh, you know, somebody who they will quote something throughout the show if you're really listening to it. Uh, cadets when they yearly did my favorite things you know you can't obviously you can't do 12 minutes of my favorite things but what you can do is you can pick your favorite songs and intertwine my favorite things throughout um throughout all of it so like you know being a music educator i love hearing like what songs like i really i'm really thoughtful about what songs i pick to depict certain themes or certain titles and mm-hmm. whenever you do that, you know, I think it's, I think it's really cool. I think it's really smart when they do that. And then visually, can he do that with the drill as well as, as well as the music, you know, not just the actors. Cause for me being visually impaired, I'm, I don't see a lot of the times what's going on when it comes to like facial expression or how, you know, how the body work, like, a lot of that for me has to come through the drill. Now, if they set the drill up right and they focus a lot of the point to make me look, then yeah, then I, I'll catch stuff. Uh, so a lot of times when they're doing that, you know, I'm just like, okay, I, when I'm visually intrigued and I can hear the music and everything makes sense, you know, when I can hear the music through the drill, that's those type of things, which is kind of compared to the way they organize drill and design drill now. That's kind of an old school mentality, you know, you used to, you know, when I was brought up, he's like, if when you marched and played, I know it might piss some people off saying Wait, that. Wait, what? <laughs> what? What marching band you march and play, get out, go, get yeah. you're out of here. But like when you march and play, if you're playing a bunch of fast passages, you see this contrary drill. So not only are you hearing fast stuff, but you're seeing fast stuff come across your face too. Mm-hmm. Um like that type of that type of stuff, I found 
I find super effective because it's still. I mean, we did an old school do si do company front to end our shows this year, like minimal contrary motion, but it was enough to to propel the end of our show for it. And you know, it that type of stuff works because it start out like you're really thinking. You know, they really take the time. Like, what can we do visually to help push this forward? All right, let's do this. So, um, and then I like mixed meter. I, I anything to make me think <laughs> from a mathematical brain. You know, if if I can, if I have to think about how I need to tap my foot or bob my head, yeah, I'm all about it. You know, Blue Devils when they did 160 beats per minute in Metropolis, like. I immediately figured out, okay, how can I steal this without stealing this? You know, because of like <laughs> nobody does anything in seven eight. Uh, so anything with a mixed meter that makes me think from a mathematical standpoint, um, beneath the surface. With mm-hmm. a I was just thinking about that. Yeah, that's I was all about that show. You were, you were. I was, I was like this, this ish right here. Mm-hmm. Like all right. You know. If you want to know how Cedric really feels about mixed meter, you need to listen to any of his uh, <laughs> music he has uh, um, ever created. Because I think, have you ever created a piece that had only one meter in it? Yes, the piece that's published. Oh, okay, well then there we go. That's that's probably why. Enough. So. Uh, yeah, it's in three four the whole time. <laughs> well, there we so, go. That's one of the. That's one of the, the, the wonderful gifts that you presented to me as, as a student of yours. Anytime we were at like honors band or all district and we were handed a piece that had like 12, eight or seven, eight or nine, eight or anything, eight that wasn't four, four, three, four. And everybody was like looking around like, Oh my gosh. I was like, I've been playing this. (laughs) <laughs> since eighth grade because my director doesn't like to write in basic time signatures. I do not. <laughs> no. I do not. I, I, I don't the know. Directors don't... up there telling people how to count it. And I'm like, can I, can we go like, <laughs> and I don't know why I get, what got me into that. I really don't. <clears throat> I, I don't, I mean, it had to have been something, but I didn't play a lot of Latin. Like, well, I do, I do like Latin music, but like, <laughs> so that's, that's, not, part of it. that's not an odd time. It's just, it's just emphasized. But like, I, I don't know. I think I just started listening to stuff. And I don't, I don't know, because I, like, I got kind of big into avant-garde jazz. Thing can't. I'm about to say, I was like any fusion jazz or something like that. Like, yeah. You're getting uh, a lot of that stuff in there. Stan Kenton was really big, and you know he doesn't. He don't know what four four time is either. Uh, not not <laughs> Stan Kenton. Sorry. Well, yeah, Stan Kenton's one, but Don Ellis as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, some Strawberry Suit, which I was so glad I got to do that with one of my groups. Uh, but yeah, because you know anything can groove. You know, if you if you do it right, mm-hmm. uh, you might feel you might feel awkward. Yeah. You might. Like, if you just do a, it until it don't feel awkward anymore. Yeah. You might know? get a cramp trying to tap. To, you know, oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there it is. Okay, I'm good. Yeah. Unless we're going to have a stroke or a seizure. Uh, yeah, right. But, yeah, I, I I mean, this year, my concert group, everything's in 12-8, but we shifted from 12-8 to 6-4 throughout the entire, like, our whole openers just shift back and forth. Um, so, I don't. Who knows what you're tapping your foot to? I don't know. I don't know half the time. Um, and you do like the the patented one. Yeah. One. Yeah. <laughs> like we'll that's it. all I got. I that's uh, all we got here. Yeah. So it feels like one. So I'm gonna put a one here. Yeah. No. So. But yeah. So those type of shows, you know, people that aren't afraid to to go outside of the box and do some stuff and. You know, your atypical stuff, original stuff. Like, I love classical music, but I love to hear, you know, I think that's one reason why I'm such a fan of Sosato and what they were doing in the early 2000s because nobody else sounded like them. Mm-hmm. It was it was really cool. And then because it was original, the drill writer, I mean, him, Sosato and Michael Gaines is like peanut butter and jelly. Like, you, 
you there's no better combination. <laughs> like uh, the way they just made things work. That's brilliant. So well, we shall yeah. see if embers can be reunited into flames this year. It'd be interesting. I don't, know, I don't know within the first thirty seconds if if Sarcedo had a hand in that arrangement. It won't take long. <laughs> it will not take long at all. So you're gonna hear hot pitch screams this head. What? In my house is screaming. Finally, ah. <laughs> <laughs> they're back. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, which that uh, the COVID year show, the rock, the night at the rose, uh, is that what it was called? Something rose, something rose. It was something anyway. That show, like that was really fun. Like I, mm -hmm. it'd be I'd be interested to see maybe something like maybe not night exactly like that, but like something with that type of energy because I was. I really enjoy watching that. And I was like, I hadn't, I hadn't really cared for a carry show in a while, and like I like this one. And I like this past year's show too. It's because uh, no one, no one cared that. It, that sounds bad. Like no one cared that year. It's just like we're gonna go out and we're gonna play what we want to play. Yeah. yeah. And that's why people are just like ah about it because mm, it didn't matter. I, you, just, I, you know. I really wanted Boston to bring those screens back out. My God. No, you God. never know. That's just like this. That's like. Blue Coast, I was like, Blue Coast would be glad. Because <laughs> that right there. Yeah. But, so, yeah. So, those are a couple of things that we kind of like about shows. And maybe when Will comes back, or we, we may let him explain some stuff he likes. He'll need a whole episode for himself. Because <laughs> he'll get going. We always say that about Will. We're just like, and we're going to need three hours for Will just to, <laughs> to get through this stuff. And he like takes like a minute. Yeah, you know, I, I like this kind of stuff. He likes to process. He does. He says. This is my favorite thing about Will. Here we go. Ready? Just ask me a random question. Ask me a question. Is the sky blue? C. And that's all we get for like ten seconds. I love, <laughs> I love him, man. He thinks so much. I love him. I He's love like, you. I love you, Will. I, I don't know if people really realize what they're doing <laughs> when, when you got, when you got that front and all that going on back there. Come on, man. Come, I love. Will. Come on, man. <laughs> I love him. Percussion is not drumline. <laughs> um, like, stop telling us we know we, we, are we, we heard it three episodes ago <laughs> we still own it Love yeah. it, man. oh gosh so, um, so like I said seasons are getting ready to kick up uh, mm -hmm. if you are a numbers Nazi like I can be sometimes uh, there's a couple of places that you can look for guard scores uh, if you go to WGI.org and then under Color Guard, you'll see 2023 uh, Color Guard rankings. I believe that's what it is. What they do is from every regional, so I think the first regional is actually on the 11th, but from every regional, they'll compile everybody's scores who's going to world championships and then they'll rank them uh, and they'll do that every week. And then they have a system of if you don't go out for a week or so, they add certain points or whatever to your score. Just so you can kind of get this flowing look at, you know, who's how people are ranked and stuff like that. And it, it actually comes out to be fairly accurate when it's come over, said, done. Because WGI scoring is pretty consistent. Uh, I, could, I, I feel comfortable saying that. So if you want to check the guard scores out, you can check them out there. For percussion, um, you can go to a website called drumrank.com. Sorry, I'm stuffed up. Drumrank.com. Uh, Here we go. Yeah. Here oh, comes. I, I, it is. We're just talking about it. Here it is. I don't know. I can put that video on me. Uh, <laughs> but uh, they, uh, they categorize. They do every – also every group that go in the world. Uh, 
So, and they but they all they do every show. So they do the circuit shows as well as the regional. So like if you go there right now, you can see the percussion scores from the groups that are going to world. Uh, they're already there and they're ranked by classification. Um, and then here recently, they've added uh, historical scores for WGI and DCI. They've done a breakdown list of who's won the most championships, who's won the most brass championships, most color guard, most percussion, most V, most visual. Uh, they've done all that. They got the high scores for world championship scores for both WGI and DCI. So they've done some pretty good work here lately, uh, and they're pretty reliable. And they're pretty quick. Usually by the Monday or Tuesday, they've got everybody compiled, and if they're missing a group, they say, hey, anybody know what circuit this group is? Did they compete? What, the, what was their score? So they can they can fill stuff out pretty quick. Uh, so jumprate.com is another place you can do. And then for wins, they have an unofficial uh, place that you can look. I would just type in WGI win rankings or WGI uh, win scoring or ranking or something like that in Google, and you can find a couple of different sites. So if you want to keep up with the numbers and try to figure out how, what groups are doing what, those are some basically good websites. Uh, if I remember, I'll put them in the uh, comments or the description below so you can find those places. That way we can hook you up with those types of stuff. So, so you guys got anything else? No, man. No. Got nothing. Cool. So, let us know down below what do you, what's your favorite type of shows? What do you like to look for in shows? And uh, any other topics that you may want us to discuss as we start to get into uh, WGI season. So, um, you can find us on all social media platforms: Twitter, uh, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and then you can also watch our, our watch and listen to our uh, podcast or anchor.fm and spotify so lots of places you can find us if you like what we're seeing like comment share subscribe keep in touch contact us comment on our stuff say hi to my cat uh but anyway uh so we also on. have a future episode here soon we're doing our viewer question episode mm-hmm. um so if you got any questions you want to ask us about um anything Patrick of the Arts related or just anything in funny, general. goofy ones. Well, yeah, you know, I don't care. Just... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Rose out here, go, go Eagles. You know, whatever. He, I don't think he even likes the Eagles. I don't know. Really like but, um, but yeah. So get those questions in. Um, we had a fun time last time we did it. So yeah, get those in, and uh, we'll might read one on a future episode. So, yep. so, so for. Chris and Zach and Will. My name is Cedric. This has been episode 25, quarter of century. Crazy. <laughs> um, all the back cash. Make sure you guys take care of each other. Go support a group. Go to a show and be nice to each other. Stay warm and all this mess. And we are Dut Dut Out. Bengals got robbed. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out.